Yeah, crank it all the way to high heat. Life is too short to cook on medium, a saying that I have always said. Hey, welcome back to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. And also welcome back to the Mythical Kitchen, an old friend of the show. We got Los Angeles Times food columnist, Jen Harris. Come on down, Jen. Thank you. Jen, welcome back to Mythical Kitchen. You're back in the cell. Despite my best judgment, yes, I'm back here. <laughs> yes. Well, it really means a lot to me because the first time we had you here, listen, I wasn't as proud of my performance as I could be, but this time I know we're gonna knock it out of the park. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's three? That's three. That's good luck. Sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. We almost killed you. That's bad. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Four's, four's back to bad luck. <laughs> no! So was that release I signed in Wish. case I died? Now normally under here, there might be a candy, there might be a snack food, one of your favorite gas station surprises, but there's an even better surprise underneath this here handkerchief. Okay, let's, let's see what's under the handkerchief. Let's see it, Hand, it's pronounced handkerchief. <laughs> The official Mythical Cookbook. That's right, we are officially coming out with the Mythical Cookbook, 10 Simple Rules for Cooking Deliciously, Eating Happily, and Living Mythically. I am super, super proud of this. Y'all have been asking for this for years, and we went deep into the Mythical content mines to bring you 100 recipes, 75 of which we have adapted from all of the best foods that Mythical's ever created. We are talking about the old school Willet era. We are talking about the new school Mythical Kitchen era. It is a blending of worlds. We got a ton of fantastic photos in there. Me, all the kitcheneers were involved. There's a picture of Rhett shirtless in there. There might even be two. He might even be putting a deep fried banana in my mouth by the pool. The point is, this is an incredible book. I normally make a joke out of everything, but I am really, really proud of all the effort that we put into this. We didn't just want to phone it in and like put all of our YouTube stuff into a book. There's a lot of incredible original stories in there, a lot of original artwork, some really creative, fun stuff, including a children's story of Link getting dragged to hell by a robotic vulture. You'll see when you buy it. Speaking of which, pre-orders are available right now. Go to mythical.com slash cookbook, and then it officially publishes in March. It's a really fun time. I promise you, you will not regret it. Then today, I will be preparing you three dishes from the Mythical Cookbook, because last time, listen, we tried to get a little too fancy with it. We served you a whole bone-in fish. That caused some issues. Who could say who's to blame? Certainly not me, but this is good home-style comfort food adapted for the home chef. I think you're really gonna love it. I hope so. And if you do love it, would you be willing to lend your name and reputation to the back cover of the book, writing a very esteemed blurb? If I survive and I love it, I will write a blurb for you. What if you die and you love it? Can we get a ghostwriter? You know, yeah, I think you're out of luck then. Fair enough. <laughs> Jen, thank you so much for doing this. You ready to get to it? I am, let's do it. Let's eat. So I take it this is a redemption challenge to see um, if I make it through alive or not. Since last time I was served um, many bones, large bones that could have lodged in my throat and killed me. Um, I'm taking a big risk. Uh, and I think he's gonna impress me and not kill me this time. All right, Jen, first up, we actually have our complimentary bread course. Wow. Now this is our house baked, we are calling it the Baconator Pretzel. These are soft pretzels inspired by Wendy's Baconator. Um, the <laughs> dipping sauce is a sort of Thousand Island uh, Sands pickles plus bacon grease. And then we have a bacon and sharp cheddar with a lot of cheese lace around, of course, a uh, boiled and then baked pretzel. Can I eat it? Oh, absolutely, okay. yeah. I'd recommend um, tearing it, submerging it in that sauce, and then kind of biting it and doing a <laughs> motion to get all of the cheese juice. Oh, you want me to slurp the cheese? If you if, if, if you prefer. I'm gonna actually try it without the cheese first, so I can judge your pretzel making. Fair enough. Skills. Also, it's not cheese. It's uh, mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup, and bacon fat. Mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup, and bacon fat. To mimic the sauce that is on a Baconator. Mm. Mm. That's a pretty good pretzel. Thank you. Yeah. And it's adapted for the home cook as well. Not, oh, okay. You know, when, Wendy's is not my favorite restaurant. So. It's nobody's favorite <laughs> restaurant. You think there's somebody out there who's like, Wendy's is my favorite restaurant? It's definitely, it definitely tastes like a burger sauce. I love that for us. So, so you nailed that. Uh, I don't know if it's the best thing to pair with the pretzel, yep. which is pretty stellar on its own, um, but I'm not mad at it. You don't no. need to eat the sauce. You know, and the good news is you can eat this, you can pair this with any sauce in your home. Yeah. You want some A1? No, I'm good. No, oh, fair enough. <laughs> no, it is comforting though. And I would like, like this would be good like while you're watching a game or something. Jen, thank you so much. Good start, everybody. <laughs> this is the perfect first dish from the cookbook to cook for a food critic for a couple reasons. One, 
Who doesn't love French toast too? Who doesn't love Skittles? But also this is really emblematic of what we did with the entire cookbook. So long before my time during Willet cereal, Rhett and Link found out that you put Skittles in milk, the Skittles become kind of inedible, but the Skittle milk is really, really delicious. You can't just make a whole recipe for Skittle milk. The ingredients are Skittle in milk. So what we decided to do is take the technology of Skittle milk and transform it into French toast. Ergo, we have the Skittle milk French toast and it is really fantastic. We are also making a Skittle syrup. Now, <laughs> You dump a bunch of Skittles into water. Yes, that is a recipe it is in the cookbook. We're gonna take a whole pack of Skittles, put that into some water that we have boiling, and we're just gonna let that go. We're gonna whisk it, it's gonna come together. And then now we have been uh, steeping Skittles in milk overnight. You don't have to do it overnight, about an hour will do. And you see, you just get some white candies that are in there, fantastic. We're gonna put that off to the side, and then we are going to whisk up our eggs, mix it into there, and then get our bread dredged. All right. And we're just gonna whisk that right into our custard there. We've been dehydrating this bread because as we found out, do we do all Myth Munchers on French toast? No, we did Busting Food Network Myths and I never believed Alton Brown that you need to stale out your bread before you make French toast. Now we test it and turns out you do. So we got some stale bread right here. Look at her go. We're gonna reduce that for a couple minutes. Let the candies fully dissolve. So we got some stale bread right here. Uh, we got some butter and a griddle. Boom, skate that butter, wait. Yeah, crank it all the way to high heat. Life is too short to cook on medium, a saying that I have always said. Does anybody else have this thing where they only love whisking in giant bowls where there's no risk of overflow? Feels so good. Oh, you feel like you're just, it's like uh, playing, it's like bowling with bumpers on. There's just such a massive safety net. Also, I always bowl with bumpers on. All right, we're gonna let that soak in there. I like to let my toast soak in the custard a little bit. That's a little Paul Hollywood. You know Paul Hollywood. All right, we're gonna start layering on our French toast. We're only gonna serve Jen a couple pieces, but I wanna make some for the whole family because the mental cookbook is meant to share. Toast in there. Yeah, I can get one more piece on. I can get one more piece on. What I like to do with our Skittle syrup is you let it reduce for about five minutes until it thickens up. Then you drop a little bit of butter in there and that's gonna make it nice and rich. One more, you gotta drag the French toast over, kind of bless it. And that didn't fit. Uh-oh. Let that cook in the butter for about three minutes. We're gonna flip it, Skittle syrup, mount it with butter. Boom, simple home style cookery. You know, that's what Mythical has always been about. That and creating abominations of God that we will one day have to pay for, but today will not be that day. Skittles are not my favorite. <laughs> they've never been, I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. They've never been my favorite candy. I mean, they wouldn't even be in my top like 30 candies. So Skittles are not, not my favorite. This is an unconventional course number two. I know huh? what you're saying. We just want to cook you fun things in the cookbook. May I add syrup? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. So um, if you could uh, sort of waft and get the redolence of the dish and tell me what you think it is. Well, there's definitely French toast, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Yeah. This is red. So it's either spicy, like chili, or you put strawberries in oh, it. Give it. Give it a nice, we're getting anything familiar? I don't, I'm not smelling anything. Am I supposed to? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't I'm even gonna know. I'm going to try it by itself. Yeah, please. Did you melt candy? We did. So <laughs> this is our house made Skittles milk French toast. Ah, okay. We found that if you dissolve Skittles in milk, uh -huh. it, it is a wonderful culinary creation, but we needed a recipe to fit that into. So we turned it into a custard, made French toast, and then that is a house made Skittles syrup, simply Skittles water and mounted with a little bit of butter to finish. Awesome. So uh, aren't Skittles illegal now in the... Yeah, no, we got a guy though. Oh, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. all right. So the first time I came, you tried to kill me with the bones. Yeah. Now you're feeding me a. Uh, oh, that's not the first substance illegal substance, substance that's been in your meal today, <laughs> Jen. Get out of here. Just kidding. Okay. This does look good though. Yeah. But actually, I was wondering. I was like, this this has no smell. It just just tastes a little like candy. Did not smell. It didn't smell like anything. Oh yeah, that hardly smells. Yeah. There is a whole bag of Skittles melted just into the syrup. A whole bag mm. into just this much. Mm. Yep. I don't, what, I don't know whether to be proud of you or scared. It's not diet of, food, of what you, you know. did. <laughs> you really taste the uh, the Skittles. But if you say that with like a, you really taste the Skittles, then it's like a happy. Yeah, you know, I think the actual French toast is really good. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm feeling the Skittles just because, or maybe it's just because I was expecting like maple syrup. Mm. It's like crunchy on the outside. It's like not too eggy, and then yeah, you just have this whopper of a. <laughs> of a sweet 
You know, the good news is you can add any syrup you want yeah, to this French oh, okay. toast, you know what I mean? Yes, We're yes. here to provide inspiration Got it. for other people. Uh, if you saw this on a diner menu, would you order it? You know what? If I saw Skittle syrup, I'd probably say syrup on the side and I would give it a try. So I would still order this. That's still a win in my book. There you go. This is my single favorite recipe in the cookbook. I just wanted to show it to you guys. This is one of the original recipes. Don't slap your hand near a knife. This is one of the original recipes that you've never seen before, but I'm showing to you now. Uh, this is the Lomo Saltado cheesesteak. I made Lomo Saltado on the show before as part of meal prep that I eat because it's just one of my favorite things. Uh, basically stir fried beef with potatoes, onions, tomatoes, a little bit of soy sauce, vinegar, but a cheesesteak is one of my favorite sandwiches. Longtime Eagles fan, Jason Kelsey, friend of the show. Go birds, baby. Uh, families from Allentown. So we decided to merge two cultures that famously hate each other, Peru and Philadelphia. If you didn't know about the Peruvian Philadelphian Wars of 1896, Google it, it'll come up. Uh, but we're merging them together and this is one of my favorite things. It tastes incredible. We're gonna start with a ribeye and we are going to slice it as thin as possible. When I say as thin as possible, I mean as thin as you're willing to get it. Also, if you freeze your ribeye for about like 15 minutes maybe, maybe more, maybe even 20, uh, it will come out better. You want a nice sharp knife and a nice cold steak. Also, we got hoagie rolls from our local grocery store bakery. If you can, if you got a grocery store that bakes off hoagie rolls, they're generally better than the stuff you can find uh, in like the bag section. Oh, also French fries are going in there. Peru, birthplace of potatoes in the history of the world, by the way. And every time somebody's like, mashed potatoes are Irish guacamole, it's like mashed potatoes are Peruvian guacamole. Perfect, so we're gonna get this working in a pan. You don't even need to put any lube in the pan uh, because there's so much fat in a ribeye. And that'll just get out there. And now I'm gonna start slicing up the aromatics. You don't want too much browning on a cheesesteak. I found a lot of people kind of overbrown their meat. My hard reaction isn't everything, you know? I don't want that crispy beef in there. I can touch raw vegetables after I touch the raw meat because these are all getting cooked with the raw meat. That's the rules. Slice some red onion here. Perfect. All right, meat's off and browning. We're just gonna chuck the onions right in there. Ain't nothing to it, but to do it, crank that heat a little bit. Tomatoes, I'm gonna wait a little bit to throw in. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the core out. This isn't the safest way to do it. We do have, though, a, a mythical kitchen guide to food safety in the cookbook. Um, so do as I have written, not as I am currently doing, I suppose. Take out the seeds, boom. You want your tomatoes to look like this. This is how I've typically had it in Lomo Saltado, which means, uh, I believe it means jumping beef. Cool. Got some tomatoes going, but we are also gonna hit it with some soy sauce and, and vinegar. Uh, I'm gonna take some garlic, two cloves, palm oil, strike it. Yeah, so last time Jen was here, we almost killed her with fish bones. And the good thing is we don't have a single bone-in fish recipe in this entire cookbook. Look at us, that is the official Mythical Kitchen Guide to Food Safety. Awesome garlic going in the pan. Thank you very much. Beef is almost cooked. Toss in our tomato, and then this is kind of wet right now. You got some steam from the beef, but in comes the innovation of Peru with throwing french fries right in there. We're gonna get a little, oh, these all stuck together like a brick. Okay, we're gonna throw in the french fries, and the french fries are gonna add in one French friability, French fritaciousness, French friacity, if you will, but also they're gonna absorb some of that liquid and then that's gonna leave you a nice melty sandwich. So stir fry that until the French fries absorb some of the beef juice. That's looking awesome. I'm gonna wash my hands now. Now seems the appropriate time. Seasoned it, yeah. What we need is a little bit of cilantro that I'm just gonna tear off. I like nice big pieces of cilantro. I'm gonna add some of that in there. Yes! So now we're gonna mound all that up. And we're gonna take three slices of American cheese. And we're just gonna let that sit, let that steam. Now I wanna take some of this and put it on top of there to help influence melting the cheese. Okay, perfect. And then now, hoagie roll. So a lot of, a lot of hoagie places, here, here's what you do. You gotta hollow it out a little bit. Keep that for later. That's gonna be a fun time. Take that, put it directly over the top. And you just gotta go hug it. You just gotta go hug it, chug it football. Woo! Just like that, there you go. There you go, put some of the french fry on top. And now you're gonna take this big old slop witch and you're gonna come follow me, ven conmigo. 
So you're gonna put that, ow, oh my God, it's so hot. But the steam is what makes it. The steam is what makes it. You wanna tuck it. Hold on, grab this. Yeah, take that out. Boom, boom, bat. Tuck that in, roll it up in foil. Tuck the edges. Look at this beautiful cheese stick. You ever see anything like that? Ooh, scraps. I have actually only written one blurb for the back of a cookbook uh, because I feel like it takes, it's gonna take a lot for me to throw my weight and reputation behind someone's cookbook and they're not all great and there's a lot out there. Uh, so if this one is good, if the food is really good and I believe in it, I'll write a blurb. I'm excited for this because this is my single favorite recipe in the cookbook. This is an original, never before been featured in the mythical universe. This is the Lomo Saltado cheesesteak. I love cheesesteaks, but for me, especially growing up in LA, eating such vibrant cuisines, there's just not enough acid and complexity in there. And so I figured Lomo Saltado, you get the vinegar, you get the soy sauce, you get the cilantro, the tomato, all the garlic in there. And so we put some American cheese on it, shaved ribeye, and a nice hoagie roll. Lomo Saltado cheese steak was born. This looks great and it smells fantastic. Yes. And I, I'm gonna actually cut it in half. Oh, please cut it in half, yeah. yeah I check, feel like check the, the best part of the sandwich will, be, yes, will mm -hmm. be the, all right, you got a nice soft, squishy roll. Mm -hmm. Gotta be squishy, just enough to absorb the grease. And there's uh, french fries in there, of course, just to sort of, of trap all that. Oh, wow, should I? Mm -hmm. Look at that. That looks amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm I love that there's like, it french fries sticking out the butt of the sandwich. Oh, okay. All those french fries sticking out the butt. Oh, that's kind of ridiculous. Wow. Yes. There's good flavor on the meat. You get the herbs. Mm -hmm. I love the fresh cilantro. The onions are really great. You get that lomo salt, like the essence of lomo saltado too. Yeah. With that like soy. But what does it for me are the or the limp french fries. Because I'm it's, being serious. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm being serious. If they were crunchy, it would not go. Mm -hmm. Like it would not work. These are these are so perfect. And, and they just become a sandwich filling. Mm -hmm. And they help soak up the grease and some of the other flavors in here too. I'm I'm this so glad great. that you see the not only that you see the vision, that you're tasting the vision, because we all tasted mm. this when we first made it and we were like, this is something. Like this is the thing that we did and we're really proud of. And now you can do it at home. I would order this at a restaurant. 100%. Yeah? Yes. I. This would make it in my column, actually. Is that yeah. a promise? That is a promise, yeah. We gotta do the pop-up. You let me know when, I will be there. I promise you'll do that. Very Jen, this, good. this really means a lot to me, thank you. Very good. Now, when I think of food critics, and, and really the cutting edge of food, especially in such a metropolitan area like Los Angeles, I think of two things. I think of one, Taco Bell. They were the first to ever make a hexagon-shaped, taco-adjacent product. Two, I think meatloaf. Because meatloaf really is a food of possibility. You know, it's not only a loaf of meat, it's a loaf of hope, I think. Also, uh, yeah, so we're making a Taco Bell meatloaf. This is in the book. This is also literally the first food I ever made for Good Mythical Morning for the Willet meatloaf. And in that one, I blended a bunch of Taco Bell burritos into a slop and then mixed that with meat. And it wasn't nearly as good as this. So what we've done is we've been inspired by the Doritos Locos Taco. And uh, we are infusing all those flavors into this meatloaf and we're cooking it in a bunt pan. Gotta start sweating some onions off. Always sweat your aromatics for a meatloaf or any sort of meat adjacent product. There we go, salt the onions. That's gonna help bring out some of the moisture. Why make a meat bunt cake? That's a heck of a question. I'll give you the honest answer. This is supposed to be a normal meatloaf. And then we were talking to our food stylist for the cookbook shoot, Lauren Anderson, who actually has worked with Taco Bell a lot and got Taco Bell to send me a gift box. Lauren, you freaking rule. She goes, you know what would be hilarious? If this was just a meat bunt. And we're like, that is hilarious. So now we're doing it in this, but you can also free bake this put it on, uh, just make it a lump, and then put it on a big old sheet pan and do that. We got some oregano. Oregano is uh, grown in Mexico. Mexican oregano, you've heard the term. So we're gonna add that in there. I like to put all my uh, spices and stuff into the onions as they're sweating, because it's all gonna get in there. It's gonna toast up the spice a little bit. So we're gonna start making our big old lump mash of meat. 80-20 ground beef from the grocery store. We're gonna dump in a bunch of Doritos. These are gonna partially act as our breadcrumbs. We initially tried this recipe with only Doritos and no breadcrumbs. Turns out there's a lot of grease in Doritos, thus uh, negating the point of breadcrumbs in its entirety. So you gotta add both. That's the level of recipe testing that we have done here. And then we're gonna add two whisked eggs to that. I love just mashing meatloaf with my hands. Taco Bell fire sauce. This is optional. You can add any hot sauce that you'd like, but they sell Taco Bell fire sauce in a big old glass bottle. And <laughs> I just think that's fun. So we're gonna add 
maybe a tablespoon of that. We're also gonna brush down the bunt pan with the Taco Bell fire sauce. This rules, dude. This is fun. This is just a fun time. All right, we're gonna paint this up the sides. That's gonna slightly caramelize, give it a whole lot of color and texture. Uh, pre-made taco seasoning. A lot of people crap on pre-made taco seasoning, but the one thing that it really tastes like is Taco Bell. Really cumin forward, there's some MSG, which again, MSG, which is good and safe. A little bit of citric acid, some chili powder. I'm gonna dump a fair, yeah, dump a fair amount of that in there. That's awesome. Uh, it's all measured out in the cookbook. You'll, you'll see, you'll see when you get there. All right, the onions are almost done sweating. I'm gonna take the other half of my taco seasoning packet. You can put them all on the onions, you can put it in there. You know, cooking, it's, uh, it's like jazz. I don't understand it. All right, we're gonna add the onions. Here's the thing. I would typically tell you to cool down the onions. You let it sit there for 10 minutes. We got stuff to do. You are cooking in a home. You got a lot of stuff to do. So I'm gonna teach you a very valuable technique. Many would say that you should use a spoon or something to mix the meat. I'm gonna use my hands. Use the coldness of the beef to insulate you from the heat of the onions. What other cookbook are you gonna get tips like that from? None, none. You effectively make cold beef mittens to put around your hands to protect you from hot onions. And now, this is my technique. I'm gonna throw balls of meat there. You're gonna mash it into the grooves of the bunt pan, but I just wanna get even balls stationed around there. Perfect. Also, hey, you can take this mixture, you can make Taco Bell, you can make little meatballs, you can make little sliders out of it, you know? You don't have to put it in a bunt pan. You can make, oh my God, cupcakes? You put some whipped nacho cheese on top? What a fun time. Kids love this. Kids love Mythical Kitchen. This is going into a 325 degree oven for about 75 minutes. You just wanna make sure that the internal temperature reads above 150 when you take it out, but 165 as it rests. But this will get a lot of carryover cooking because it's about four pounds of Dorito meat product bread shoved into a bunt. I feel like I have an interesting relationship with Taco Bell. <laughs> it's um, Sometimes it's like an after, well, most of the time it's like an after drinking food. I don't actually know if I've eaten Taco Bell sober before and I'm not drunk right now. So I guess I'm gonna eat some Taco Bell sober, prob probably, maybe. For your main course, Jen, this is our showstopper. Uh, this is our oh Doritos Locos Taco Bell meatloaf. Now we subbed out half the breadcrumbs for actual Doritos. There is real life Taco Bell fire sauce within the meat. It is crowned with cheese and then garnished like a Doritos Locos Taco Supreme with sour cream and tomatoes. Um, the sides are mashed potatoes with nacho cheese instead of gravy and normal peas. The sides are superfluous. Uh, don't judge us by them, but you can't eat them. Why, why are the peas normal? You don't want to... Stick something in there? Ah, uh, you know, we thought about just dumping a bunch of M&Ms in there, but we decided to... <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, well, I will try this first. Oh. Mm. Let's make sure we get enough cheese on here. This is meant to feed a family of 26 to 27. There's something so familiar about this. I know that what it's supposed to taste like. Mm -hmm. But my mom actually made this, like, meat and corn casserole when I was little and this, to <laughs> this totally tastes like it. No, that's beautiful. This is the Ratatouille moment. You yeah. are the mean food critic who eats like a strawberry. Hey. No, no, hey. just I'm saying in the movie, hey. not in real hey. life, but in the movie, he was mean, but also misunderstood. But also mean. <laughs> also so mean, oh my God. All right. Hmm. Okay. It has an interesting texture, probably because of the Doritos. Correct, yeah, that's the masa really getting in there and doing yeah. its work. Mm -hmm. but, it, but it also gives it a masa flavor, like a corn flavor. Yeah. Versus just breadcrumbs, which is nice. Doritos have like a lovely toast on them too, so you should be getting some of those toastiness notes yeah. coming in. Yeah, uh, no, but I actually think this is, this is very, I think mission accomplished with this, and I do like the texture of it and that corn flavor that you get from it. And it really does remind me of my mom's, we just call it Mimi uh, and corn casserole. Jen, thank you so much, so you will officially approve and write a blurb on the back of the Mythical Kitchen cookbook. I will. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Everyone give it up for Jen Harris. Thank you. Coming back despite us almost killing her the first yes. time and jury is still out on how you're gonna feel after eating all this, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna be here for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. um, I'll make a valiant effort. You can't leave until you clean the plate. Um, Great. But for real, thank you so much and thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate it. Everyone, make sure to follow Jen Harris on socials. Tell them where you're at. Uh, at Jen underscore Harris underscore, and you can go to latimes.com slash food. Hell yeah, and thank you all so much for stopping by. Go ahead and pre-order the Mythical Cookbook out right now. We are super, super proud of the work that we put into it. We're super proud of Jen Harris's blurb on the back. We got new episodes coming out every week. You know where we are. We're here. Come find us. See y'all next time.
We're finally releasing a cookbook featuring fan favorite dishes from GMM and Mythical Kitchen and tons of completely new original recipes. Pre-order now at mythical.com slash cookbook.